five. Okay, if you notice piece number five is cut on the bias. I have to also make sure that I mark my marks. Oh, I did. See how I cut a slash for size 18 on this triangle. I got my notch. There's the 18. It's right in the corner here, so I don't need to mark that. And I'm going to pull these off, and now I'm going to adhere the interfacing. And remember, not only did I cut the garment on the bias, I cut the interfacing on the bias also. something about that. All right, so the next thing they want us to do is sew it together. And you can see the striation of the grain of the fabric is going at a diagonal. So when I sew it together, it's going to create a chevron, okay? So they want me to sew it together down the center back at 5 eighths of an inch. This is also to stay stitch the jacket between the circles. Okay, I'll get that done too. So, thank you. Making sure everything's lined up. Five. Five pants. All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is press this up the back. Now, did you all notice there's a, a line here where I marked that? That's for this roll line that's there. So let me show you what happens there. And let me show you why it's on the bias. Check it out. I can take this now, that's the edge that gets sewn, bend it, and see how it breaks right at that point, and then look, it just makes a natural collar. See how it just lays there. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to press it, and then that comes out flat. That's the point of having that mark, and that's the break point on the collar. This part is the stand, this part is the fall. Okay. So that's why it's on the bias. It helps bring the straight piece around and fold it over the proper way, and it just does it naturally. And you can also see the chevron pattern that you get from having it on the bias. So it looks kind of nice. Okay, the next thing they said to do was stay stitch the collar edge of the jacket. Now, why would I stay stitch this? Nope. Because it's a round piece. It's a round piece about to be sewn to a straight piece. Yes. We got that coming again. And if you do this right, I remember I told you the, the collar was the hardest part? Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be. bringing it all the way down to this little tick mark there. Okay, so now it's stay stitched. So the tick mark, which is here. There's my little tick mark right there. All right, so now I've got this, which needs to be adhered to this. Do you see the problem? I've got a circle here that I've got to get this straight thing sewn to. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to, I don't want to compromise my tick marks. So all my slashes, clips need to be right here on the shoulder seam you need extra clips because that's a really hooked in curve. So you know what I'll do it on the black side so you can see the stitching. Like that there's right in that shoulder, I've got three close together. Then get down here, cutting two not through, and I have my little tick mark there. Okay? So <clears throat> is it now telling me to pin this to it? It says pin under collar to jacket, neck edge, right sides together, 
Matching notches, center backs, triangles, and large circles. Okay, so here we have, remember we did the intersection one in fundamentals? Line this up, pull it back, and make sure it lines up perfectly. Put it back down, now we're going to pin this. How did I know which side of the collar to sew to it? The triangle. The notches. Mm -hmm. I got notches here and notches yeah. there. So I'm going to line the notches up there. And I have this little tick mark that goes to the shoulder seam. When those things are lined up, all see how it just all falls into place? Now, there's a tick mark here. Yes, it's to stitch up to there. Okay. There's a dot here, remember? Let me pull the pattern piece out so you can see. <clears throat> there's a dot right here. This is the most important dot in your life, okay? So I'm going to put a pin right where it is. Yes, you pick the one that belongs to you, yes. Now, there's a dot, five-eighths of an inch from this tick mark. I was marking the dot. These two dots have to go on top of each other. If this makes it easier for you, stick a pin in one, stick a pin in the other, and then pull them together, pull this pin out, and now I have marked the dot perfectly. See? Where the pin is going in is where that dot is. Do you see it? I put the pin in in the middle of the dot. So I'm not concerned with this edge. That's my mark that I'm trying to go to, right where that pin is going in. Okay, so let me do the other side. Again, this was the triangle for the shoulder. I lined that up to, see how I'm lining it up to the shoulder seam? This is a seam you cannot take for granted. I've got my notches lined up. And notice everything else just falls into place. All right, so now I've got that dot. When did you put that, that tick mark in the um... When I took the pattern piece off, I marked all marks. I marked the dots, the triangles, the, the you know, notches, like everything. Mark here. When I took the pattern piece off, mm -hmm. I marked everything on it so that I could take the pattern piece off. Okay. So that's when I marked it, when I was taking the pattern piece off. So right now, I'm doing this one differently. I know this dot is right here. It's 5 eighths from this edge and 5 eighths from that edge. That's going to be about right there, and it needs to be 5 eighths from that edge. Right there. All right. What I need to show you is a little high school kid's toy that explains to you what's about to happen, if I can find it. Hold on, Portia, I'm coming. Ow. Here it is. Do you all remember these? Mm -hmm. Even in Puerto Rico? Yeah. Cootie cutters. It's a fortune teller. Yep. Yeah. So if you notice, I've got a dot drawn on, drawn on the tip of it. So if you notice, the dot is still there, but they're not connected. If I look down in the middle of it, there's a little teeny hole. See that right there? That's what we're about to achieve in making this intersection that is the lapel. All these dots are going to come together, but they're not going to be sewn to one another. They're not going to be connected. All these dots are going to come together and be independent of each other. Okay? So remember that. So what dot am I talking about? This dot, this dot, okay? They're all going to, there's the 18, there's the 18. They're going to come together right here, but they're not going to be sewn to each other. Then, so we're going to have all this part that's free. Then two more pieces, the front and the front facing of the jacket, are going to come to this spot. And they're all going to be sewn together and come together right here, but not be sewn to each other. So you have to respect the dot. Let me show you what I mean by that. This is the first installation of the dot. Okay, there will be four more. Like I said, I need to put the needle in where the pin is going in. 
I'm not going one stitch backwards from that point. If I do, I have screwed it up. I have started attaching the dots, okay? The, the needle goes in where that pin is in. That pin is marking the dot, correct? All right, so now, you know what? Take it back. Uh, I want to do it on the side where the slashes are and the, the, the stay stitching. So we're going to come to this side. And again, I'm putting the needle down exactly where the pin went in, okay? Not one stitch behind it. And the other goal I have is to keep all edges lined up together. You can't let this happen. You've compromised the collar when you do. Everything has to be lined up perfectly. All right, so let's, so three stitches back. You notice I didn't let it go past the pin. It cannot go pack, back past the pin. All right, so go in here. Get ready for the next little set, because it's a curve. I have to keep it curved. And I have to keep, so, so what, did you notice I straightened it out? No pleats. There cannot be a single pleat. Now look, now all of a sudden, I've got fabric peeking out. That means pull this over to it and keep those edges lined up. All right. Excuse me. Now that was the intersection portion. Still got my edges lined up. Still keeping them lined up, and I'm respecting, I'm not trying to feed it in straight, I'm feeding it in as a curve, because that's what it is. Okay. Now, do you see where this pin came in right here? I'll show it to you with another pin right there. Mm -hmm. Can you see it? That's where I got to stop, not one stitch further, and not one stitch behind it. It's got to stop dead on that spot, okay? I might even walk it. Yep, right on the spot. Now I'm going backwards. I'm safe. Walking it means just being careful and moving the machine by hand. All right, so now if I pull all this out, I've got a collar that's sewn on. There's not a single pleat. The line is clean and circular. Do you see? And this is open. Let me show you where my dot is. My dot is right there. Okay? Two more dots are coming there, and they're all going to be sewn up to that same point, but none of them are going to cross the other. If you can grasp this, and Portia's been really good about getting down in here so you can see it. If you can grasp this concept, you will make perfect lapels every time. And once you grasp the concept, the, the lapels will be easy. It's like, okay, so two, not through. I can't go past the dot, okay? That's the theory of dots. And they're very important. A lot of people don't even mark them on their patterns, okay? <clears throat> so now, one last thing. I Look what happens when this gets pressed back. Overlap, right? You have to trim it. It's just to trim it. What do I need to do? They want me to trim it? Mm hmm Trim seam allowance. First, I'm going to notch it. Just because that's what I know to do. Mm -hmm. And I only did it twice in the deepest part of the curve. Oh, maybe three times. Not too many. So they want me to trim both sides? It just says trim seam allowance. Okay, so with that said, let, uh, you remember we did grading mm -hmm. in the other class? Well, you're getting ready to sew another collar onto another piece, and all these seam allowances are going to come together. So if I trim it, it's like grading it. But let me tell you what I don't want to do. Because I need to maintain the 5 eighths of an inch where this comes together, and I want you to see this portion. This stays open. If you don't sew this all the way to the end, you stop on the dot. Okay, well, I need seam allowance here. I don't want to trim this yet. Okay. I'm not feeling that. And I don't want to press that down. I just want to press where I've sewn. I'm getting 
this nice and flat. And the cool thing is that bias area on this collar makes it easy to just bend it and move it. Okay, so what happens now? Oh, come on, Lisa. Let's put it on you. It's kind of warm. There. So now do you see the beginnings of the lapel? Mm -hmm. So get all the seam allowance to come open. It will button there like that. Oh, it's not on right there. There we go. So I think the break point is down here, and then it will overlap. And remember, seam allowance is everywhere, so that's what we're looking at. As the check. And the other thing is we want to make sure the pockets are level. Looks good. Let's turn around. So you see the back and how there's fitting in there. All right, cool. Thank you. I'll trim it when I get to the point where I'm ready to lose that seam allowance, okay? All right, thank you.